Dr. Badkasa, it's a tremendous privilege to be with you again. Please could you tell me, or tell us all, how from your background you came to this momentous decision to build a university based on science and spirituality? I would answer this question in three parts. I would give my entire education. I would also give my journey into the mission of what you call people I identify me with is supercomputing and from how supercomputing I went to sciences and spirituality, fundamental sciences and spirituality and how this idea emerged like called multiversity. Yes indeed, that is extremely interesting. So you started with a career as an engineer in information technology? Not really, in the sense uh, there was no word like information technology then when I was studying really. I was born in a, let me tell something about my early childhood. Many people believe that I must have come from, I visit a lot, lot of temples, I visit pilgrimage places, I mingle with people. People believe, many people believe that I talk on Vedas, so that I must have a religious background. In fact, it is not like this, far from that. I really didn't have any religious background at all. I was born almost on the eve of independence, India's independence, in 1946, 11th October, in a very small village, a very small village in the state of Maharashtra. And my parents, both of parents really, were freedom fighters. They were, they were teachers and my grandparents also, and they did not believe really, they were agnostic in that sense. Indeed, Indeed they were agnostic, they were not, they were not in my, at my family, there was no religious tradition of this. My father believed there is only one uh, divinity. For me right now, it is India, Bharat Mata, Mother India is the divinity. And you pray for that, you do work for that. That was the background which I studied in a small primary school in a Ram, in a temple where there were no schools at that time, school buildings. So I was studying in that school. And uh, my father, though very highly educated at that time, had come to village because Mahatma Gandhi gave a call that now India is achieving the independence. You go back to your village and start from there. Start fundamentally from there. So my father and my mother had very good positions. They left that and came to a village. And then in the village, my village had population of 300, just 300 people in a small hamlet. This, one. this was like Mahatma Gandhi's journey to Shevagram. That's right. And to start the, uh, the cotton uh, spinning and the cotton weaving uh, among the common people. My, actually, my parents were married in Shevagram. Indeed, yeah, sir. They, they, Indeed, they, sir. They, yeah, and they were wearing the khadi dress yes. and uh, the, the garland they put, yes. they were just spun on the charkha. Indeed. So that was very, very interesting because at that time this was happening. This one, and they had come and my and we had farms. We had large farms, but we, my father didn't know how to, because he was all out, 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 of, out of the village. And um, anyway, I was born there. And then I studied in the greats. Once there is a great saint at that time. Uh, he started the school movement. He was not himself educated. He never studied. He was not literate himself. Uh, Santa Gargi Maharaj, which is well known for now, the Swachata Abhiyan, he started at that time. Mm. Right in my childhood, he will start sweeping anywhere you go. He will start sweeping. First thing. he said before the, he said that without this uh, no uh, this clean environment, yes. then you cannot you cannot really approach God. So first clean the temples. This is in the same spirit as uh, P. M. Narendra's Modi Modi's recent call for Swachh Bharat. Yes, exactly. Indeed, mm. I entirely agree with this. Every time I walk around our university campus, I pick up the litter. And so does our Chancellor, Dr. Nagendra. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That's practicing it. Yes, indeed. I think the Swachh Bharat movement really started, was in that sense, was started by Santa Gargi Maharas. <gasps> that, that saint, at the beginning of when India got independence, they saw this uh, India has become very filthy. Santa, whole thing. Santa Gargi Baba. Because there was a reason for that. And he used to sweep anywhere you go, first thing he will do sweep. He built many, what do you call, dharmashalas. He built many educational institutions. But himself will everywhere, wherever he goes, first act to be done is sweeping. And now we see Swachh Bharat yes. Abhiyan. We so say how, in English, uh, cleanliness is next, next to godliness. godliness. Yes, absolutely. And this is something that modern India really needs to understand. That Narendra Modi's call is not just a cleanliness. It is to godliness and to tradition. Absolutely, I think it was very nicely said. This one. Then I studied uh, in in a college, in, uh, what do you call it, Vidarbha Mahavidyalaya, and at that time we studied in mother tongue. And whenever I am asked today the question that what should be the medium of studies, 
and I said the medium of studies, though my children have studied in English medium schools, I realized that the medium of studies has to be necessarily mother tongue. Indeed. Mahatma Gandhi said that again and again. He was barrister. He did not advocate English. Yes. He advocated that it has to be Hindi. It has to be your mother tongue. It has to be this one. You must learn three languages, mother tongue, the national language, which is more popular, which uh, he argued for Hindi, yes. and of course the universal language, or not universal, the world language called English. Yes. So I, I, I really realized that. And if I had to tell the children, the parents at this moment, I know today there is a great movement that everybody should go to the English speaking schools, including farmers want that to happen, because they think they, that, is a, that is a gateway for their career building, but it's not true. If you really want to understand and you can connect it to your culture, you must study in mother tongue. I studied in mother tongue. I studied in, my, in Marathi and mastered it almost like that. And there's another universal language in India which is of a supreme importance, and that is the Sanskrit. Because when you learn Sanskrit, it is actually very, very beneficial to your consciousness and to your creative intelligence in itself. Professor Alex, I, I realize this now. Uh, there was time at that time when after independence, what should be the national language of India? There was a big argument and Gandhiji argued for Hindi. Yes. Hindi because most people speak Hindi and he argued for, but South Indian, the Dravidian states yes. were, were deadly against this. He said, no, no Hindi at all, that Hindi is being imposed on that. And this, their dialogue went, this, or this, this uh, debate went on quite some time. It is very interesting. The people who are opposing today Sanskrit, huh, whose leader is Baba Sahib Ambedkar, who is also built a constitution of, who is, who is the author of the India's country, uh, one of the authors of the, the leaders of the uh, Indian constitution, he argued for Sanskrit amongst many people. And the people, his followers are for not for Sanskrit. This is a, this is a great, great contrast. But then I went for, after that I went for engineering. I studied um, in Amravati and I, two years, uh, uh, 11th and 12th, something like that. And I went for engineering in Nagpur, in a regional college of engineering called National Institute of Technologies now. And I did my engineering in electrical engineering. At that time, though I'm identified today with electronics and computers, uh, there was no subject like electronics. This was way back uh, in 62, 63, 60, well, those are the years when I studied uh, in the early 60s. Electronics was just emerging. We were seeing the electronic devices at that time. So my engineering, I did, did, did from there. Slowly, I started getting a glimpse of going deeper into this, deeper into from engineering to sciences, because I was very interested in creative research, as you said. Why are you arguing some creative research so much? Oh, because when we look at what makes hum, human experience unique, is its cre capacity for creative thinking. It's capacity for creative response. When we have awareness, we cannot imagine that you could have awareness without the ability to react to new information and to make a choice on the basis of new information. And to make an intelligent response, you have to have a certain freedom, an inner freedom, so that what the response you are making is not simply a habitual, but you are able to have the space in which to take a decision. And this is the actual basis for creativity, is having the inner space and the inner freedom. It's called akshara in, uh, in the ancient Sanskrit, but it's the param, transcendental akshara, which enables you to have the choice and to make the somebody space. Somebody has rightly said recently, somebody has rightly said this, creative urge, creative intelligence or creative urge for creation, Something new, new creation is so fundamental to us, like our breath. It's, it's the light of, of knowledge that induces the creativity. And it's our ability to interact on the basis of that life, light, which brings life to our intelligence. Very, very interesting. So I had this urge for, I made my first radio in when I was studying. And I, I remember what a grand thing when my radio started with great struggle. Six months I was struggling with different components and making first radio, this one, from components which I got from Mumbai, Bombay, yes. this one, and we assembled together. And when I could listen to the local radio, Vivid Bharti and songs, that joy was so supreme. I, I created something and I did not get that joy, that much joy when I really made a supercomputer. I remember the first creation <laughs> like that. So, so I went to that. Then, then what happened was I wanted to go for masters. Yes. It was my mother who inspired me that 
I said I want to do for high studies, and my father wanted me to really work for some time, really because don't just this one because we had to my younger brothers and people still uh, sisters to be studied, and he said now we work for something. But my mother said no, if you're really deeply interested in further academics and eventually research, you go for masters. Mm-hmm.